What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at modern GUI design with Kinter. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at modern GUI design with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at modern GUI design with Kinter. And one of the biggest complaints that I get, and I get it a lot, is that, yeah, Kinter is really easy to use, but it looks clunky, it looks old, it looks outdated. We just can't have that. What's the use of it if it looks like it's from the 1990s, right? No more. Somebody finally fixed this. And this is amazing. Finally, there's a library out that allows you to do modern GUI design. And look at this, we've got an app right here, a little example. It's modern looking. If the title bar here is black, that's really hard to do normally. Uh, some of these things, you know, there's rounded stuff. The colors are more modern looking. The buttons look modern. You hover over them and they change. And just playing around with this thing, you can see we can do all kinds of stuff here. I'm gonna click on these things. This is an entry box. It looks definitely more modern. Very cool. And there's just tons of customization you can do with this library. So we're going to start to talk about this thing in this video. I'm going to set this up, show you how to create this, show you uh, where you can get more information. And then in future videos, we'll dive into this in more detail because there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. And this is really, really cool. So let me go ahead and close this. Head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in this series, over 200. So check those out if you haven't so far. So I've just got a file here. I'm calling it cust, short for customized, I guess, dot pi. It's in my C GUI directory. And let's head over to the web, to our web browser real quick and check out github.com forward slash Tom Shemansky forward slash custom Kinter. And I'll put a link to this in the description below. We talked about Tom a couple of videos ago with the map view. This is the same guy that created that map view we just did in the last couple of weeks. He's created this custom Kinter library, which is just absolutely amazing. So you can come through here and look at this and read all about it. If you want to look at the documentation, you can click on it here. You can see here's a list of all the different widgets you can use. If you want to like use a button, for instance, you can click on here. This is the code you would use. Here are the different options you can do. Resizing and height and width and all that kind of stuff. All the attributes, basically. And you can come through here for each of the things you might want to use. If you want to use a label, you know, you can learn all about how to do a label. And this works on top of Kinter. It's basically the same as using any Kinter widget, but instead of using the button widget in Kinter, you're going to use the CTK button widget in this library. So let's come back here to the main page here. And to install this, we just need to pip install custom Kinter. So let me just go ahead and copy this, head over to our terminal. I'm in my C GUI directory and let's just pip. And then let me paste this in, install custom Kinter. And it will go through and do its thing. That's all there is to it. Now we can start using this. So what I'm going to do here in this video is head back over here. And we can come up to the examples library. And let's just grab the complex example. So I'm going to click on this. And let me just kind of copy all this real quick. We're going to do the lazy way to copy this. I'm just going to copy this head back over to our sublime text and paste this in. That's all there is to it. Go ahead and save this head back over to our terminal. And then let's just Python cust.py run that file. And right away, we get an error. So the first line of code here, uh, they're constantly changing and updating this. And just a couple of days ago, you could see there was an update on the GitHub account. So, you know, some of the things may not work exactly. So we could just take out this line of code, this very first line of code here for this user scaling. And if you come back over to the GitHub page, come back here, we see here he fixed scaling two days ago. So maybe he didn't fix it or he didn't push the upgrade to the pip repository thing or whatever. But anyway, we can comment out this line, go ahead and save this, head back over to the terminal, run this guy again, and boom, we see right away, you know, if we unclick it, it turns dark, if we click on it, it goes blue, and it's very cool. So we can switch to light mode. This is what light mode looks like. If we click off of it, see the white bar at the top, if we click on it, it turns blue. That's just a Windows thing. You could change that in your Windows settings for all apps. You know what I mean? How you do that in Windows display or whatever. So very cool. We've got modern looking sliders, modern looking buttons, modern, modern looking entry boxes, this whole sort of gray thing here is very cool. And you'll notice these buttons are blue. 
it's very easy to customize this in a lot of different ways. So if we head back over here, we could see, uh, you know, the default theme is blue. And here's a couple other ones. We could go dark blue or green. Let's try green. I don't know. Go ahead and just change it to green. Head back over here, run this guy again. Boom, now everything is green. Very cool, just that easy. Very modern looking. Very awesome. We can keep playing around with it, I don't know. Let's, let's go dark blue. What does dark blue look like? Save this, run it again. All right, nice dark blue buttons, I like that. Whatever you like, all kinds of different options here. And the, the mode, like the appearance mode is system. We also have dark or light, so we can change this to, I don't know, dark. Save this, run it. You're not gonna see a huge difference here because we already have the dark mode. We've already looked at that here, right? But uh, that's cool. You can set that by default just that easily. So let's look through here. Now they're using classes for this example. You don't have to use classes. You can use regular functions like we do in all of our Kinter videos. And like I said, we'll go on this in the future, but you can see to use this, here you're doing a frame instead of a dot frame, it's a CTK dot frame. And TK stands for obviously Kinter, so that's cool. Same thing here, CTK button. And you'll notice you can do all of the same regular Kinter stuff. This works on top of Kinter, and it's just that easy. If we come up here to the top, we can see, yeah, we're importing Kinter, we're still using it. And we're just also importing custom Kinter. And that's really all you need just to import custom Kinter like that. And now you could start using it. And we can look at a very basic example. This is just very basic. Like I said, to use this, you just import custom Kinter, set these two attributes at the top, the basic color system you want to use. If you want to use dark mode by default, you would put that there. Here you have uh, blue, dark green, and green. And I believe you can add your own color themes fairly easily using JSON, but we'll get into all that later. And you can see right here, you know, we're just creating a root like we always do, but instead of making a TK instance, we make a custom tkinter.tk instance. And that's really kind of it. Again, down here to use a button, we just set a button equal to that, right? Stuff inside of here looks very familiar to the regular Kinter that we always use. So like I said, we'll get into all of this stuff in future videos. You can see you can put images on buttons. Very cool. Remember, here's that map widget we talked about. It shows you how to integrate this custom Kinter into map widget, which is cool. But uh, like I said, we're gonna get into all this in greater detail in future videos. I just wanted to show it to you very quickly. So you could head over to this link, Tom Shemansky slash custom Kinter. You can dig through here, play with it a little bit. This is very, very cool. And uh, really opens the door to turning Kinter into a modern GUI framework, right? Kinter is great because it is super easy to use but it looks a little clunky. And there's always been kind of hacks and workarounds you could use to make it look a little more modern, but even so, it still kind of doesn't look great, right? Even if you can change themes and do stuff like that, and uh, some of the hacks we've looked at in past videos in the playlist, this just turns the tables completely and uh, very, very cool. So check it out and uh, more on this to come because this is very exciting stuff. Tom Shemansky, you're brilliant, whoever you are, <laughs> Thank you so much for creating this. This is a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.